what is going on what's up everybody I wanted to do a video uh, the tank's been running for over a year now and um, I've responded to some comments from some earlier videos um, just because they probably come up in a surge or they've seen them online or whatever but I want to do a complete update of what I have going on so we'll start here uh, this is pretty much where it all starts this is two 40 gallon containers um, excuse me oh excuse me whoa uh, two 40 gallon containers they just hold RODI water there is no salt water in here so basically I just fill them up and uh, as of right now I'm doing bi-weekly water changes and topping off the uh, auto top off container once a week so these things will last me quite a while and up here you can see I just have some black uh, Merlock line that I just run to the laundry room where my roadie is so you can see on this container I've used five gallons and this container is full it's got 40 gallons of water in it and this thing is it's priceless having this set up here uh, we'll move on to the next thing and we'll just kind of keep this thing rolling so next up I have two cases which is uh, two um, bottles in each case so about four gallons of distilled white vinegar priceless and if you own gyre pumps you need to have this quite often to clean them this uh, if you don't know already running any of your reef tank equipment in distilled vinegar and water will clean it so that you barely even have to uh, scrub any of it so you can see here that this is diluted a little bit but that's fine I usually go pretty heavy with the vinegar and uh, a little bit lighter on the water so I can get everything clean we'll just go ahead and move over here this is new additions I am still waiting for the lunar sim module to come in but I went ahead and picked up two lunar uh, lights uh, I've been talking with reefing with O shout out to him if you don't know about him I'll leave a link to his channel in the description below he has uh, the same uh, aquatic fixture aquatic life fixture that I have and um, he's running 360s in his whereas I'm running 160s but I went ahead and picked these up he's running these lights on there he's running three on his uh, reefer uh, I believe it's a 350 I chose to go two, so uh, once the module comes in I will get these on the tank next up I went ahead and bought the optical level sensor with magnetic mount and this right here could be priceless um, I am running the uh, Neptune breakout box but uh, with three floats on it but I have the FMM module which only has one leak detector plugged into it which means that I have three uh, three more inputs so I'm going to actually replace the float switch in my auto top off container with this um, optical sensor and I actually have another optical sensor on the way that I'm going to probably replace all my floats with and do away with the um, uh, breakout box I've also thought about maybe using these optical sensors in my FMM as an auto top off for now I'm going to leave the tunes on there and uh, maybe address that later on down the road now we are in the laundry room and I am using a SpectraPure CSPDI-90-MF which basically means it is a SpectraPure 90 gallon manual flush uh, roti unit. I'm also using the booster pump uh, for multiple reasons. Number one, I get low pressure coming in. Secondly, I'm pushing the water about 30 feet away to the garage. Um, I've not dealt with any other roti units except for the Spectre Pure units and uh, I love it. Basically this is a brand new unit that's been ran once. If you follow me you will know that I used a Spectre Pure unit previously and really what, what it boils down to is it was time for me to replace all the filters and the membrane and when I started pricing it uh, and the points that I had accumulated on Spectre Pure's website I decided that I was going to uh, just purchase a whole nother unit and sell the uh, previous unit. So I sold it on Craigslist. I believe the guy was in uh, Louisville. I uh, gave him a really good deal on it. So I was uh, attempting to do my best to sort of, uh, for lack of a better term, pay it forward. So I definitely could have just replaced the filters and the membrane in here, but I chose to get another unit and uh, it's just what I chose to do so sometimes there's no rhyme or reason for the things that I do and I'm sure that I'll get some comments saying that that was dumb but to each their own new angle uh, new equipment 
So I'll fast forward the video and the lunar sim module has come in. So that basically has two Aquabus uh, ports and then one output. Uh, it would really be nice if they would put more than one output on here. Uh, that way if you decided you wanted to add more lights, you could do that easily, but it is what it is and that's the one that it comes with. But like I said, you figure with all this space here, they're gonna put another uh, output, but so be it. But this does mount in a new fashion. Um, so you would screw this piece in and then slide it in uh, your mounting bracket. So I don't know, I'm kind of partial to the old mounting style with the tabs. I know that this is a cleaner look, but with my cabinet, uh, the slide downs just don't work as well. I did get a, another optical sensor. And you can pick these up anywhere. Uh, Bulk Group Supply actually sells them with the uh, magnets. So I'm gonna put this one in the sump. And uh, I got the one from uh, earlier in the uh, auto top off and I just need to get it programmed. So I'm gonna throw this in the sump and then we'll, uh, we'll check it out. So finally looking at the tank, uh, my last video, I talked in uh, detail about the T5 fixture that I'm using. This is the Aquatic Life um, T5 uh, hybrid fixture. And you can see the Kessels uh, hanging down. A couple things to note on the fixture. Um, I'd actually talked to one of the representatives or uh, one of the guys from Aquatic Life before they even released the fixture. Uh, they did not give me this fixture. I purchased this fixture myself, but after uh, I put out the video, I talked to them again and they actually did. Um, I made a couple incorrect statements. Um, these are not just typical uh, T5 fixtures that uh, they've sold before and they just made brackets for. They actually did new tooling on the, uh, the T5 fixtures. The ballasts are now uh, in the channel uh, in between the T5s versus before they were actually on top of them. So they did that to make it uh, a smaller profile so that it matches the uh, various uh, LED fixtures that are out there. So of course the Canon, uh, Canon Kessels are a completely different animal. But up on top I have the Neptune auto feeder and basically I have it up there um, just because I can't put it on the rim of my tank because of the, uh, the gap or the lack thereof there. Um, this is not gonna come out so well, but this is one lunar light two lunar lights and it's amazing because nine out of ten times or probably ten out of ten times uh, any Neptune uh, cable is very long and for some reason the cable for the lunar lights is, is very short uh, it's it's pretty amazing of course the Aquabus cable that came with the auto feeder I was able to wrap just fine I didn't buy a longer one but for some reason, the lights there, the cables there, quite a bit more short than uh, than Ep uh, Neptune typically makes them. So, um, of course, I'm running two gyre pumps on this tank. You can see there that um, it's not going to focus very well. I'm starting to get some coralline algae to grow back on them. I have to clean them quite a bit. It's uh, two 230 pumps running on here. And uh, the full tank shot there sands a little bit dirty, but the rock is uh, Reef Cleaner Rock from reefcleaners.org. Going into the cabinet, I am running the Neptune Core 20 return pump, which pumps up to this T. From this T it goes up to half inch and goes into this reactor that is full of pond matrix. This T also goes down to a Marlock fitting which feeds the algae scrubber and um, we'll take a quick look at the algae scrubber. It's probably in need of a good cleaning so that's uh, pretty common for me. The algae scrubber has been doing very very well. I know I've mentioned it before, but maybe a little bit too well. I am running the Niles Quantum 120 skimmer. You can see the skim 8 is pretty dark, so it's working out great. I do have um, 
anything acrylic acrylic containers in the uh, uh, filter sock holder full of pond matrix some mechanical filtration there that I am going to need to um, change out did add this this is the optical sensor so um, this is it needs to be either facing this way or forward I guess they don't want you to put them upside down but uh, this is the open state and uh, whenever it goes into the water column it'll be closed unfortunately I have to put it on this side because the outer magnet so this is my auto top off container this is from blue tide acrylics and it actually has the tunes pump in it with a float switch in the back and uh, again I added a optical sensor to it and I had to put it on the front because the uh, uh, auto top off touches the back of the stand so until then I just have the optical sensor on the front of the auto top off. I do have a uh, dosing container back there it's completely empty but I have the Tropic Moran A, B and C and I'm doing like two meals a day of each one of them just by hand with that guy there. So that's about it for the uh, well I do have a little Sun Sun pump that um, is on the same schedule as my T5s. It turns onto the sump area and just moves water around in it. Try to keep it cleaned out a little bit. And I do not have this going outside. I just have it going outside of the uh, of the stand. So maybe going along a little quickly, but I'm trying to uh, uh, make this um, as kind of as quickly as possible. But I did move the scully there on the rock work and it looks like it's doing all right a little money cap the hammers have done well uh, this euphilia here is struggling I'm not sure what's going on with it but it's been struggling for quite some time and I got another one on the frag disc there Ghani's have done well in here probably really liking the T5s now another hammer with some Zoas and the Recordia's have done uh, much, much better in here with the, the T5s. Um, and I, whenever I say T5s, I'm also uh, speaking of the, the uh, Sun Blaster T5 fixtures that I had on here previously. So there's the other Recordia there. The Bird's Nest Colony, which has a lot of dead tips on it, but some still living. There's a coral frag that had fallen down. This is doing good. That Acros, uh, it's doing all right. You can see it's encrusting over the plug, so it's doing pretty good. The other bird's nest is doing quite all right. Then I moved this guy high up to see how it reacts, and uh, not really sure. We'll see over time. It hadn't been up there very long. Got some Halloween hermits down here. The little dendro's done quite all right. Um, it hasn't done. I wouldn't say it's been too bad so we'll go with it and then these guys over here have done pretty good as well the little frag rack I have over here you can see right here there's a head missing I'm not sure what's going on with that and this little a can there the the head is kind of reacting and it may be because of the light now I'm not really sure but let me pull the uh, this is an equipment cabinet let me pull the door off of it uh, and I'll turn the camera back on and we'll go over it real quick. So inside the equipment cabinet, you can see it's a mess. I uh, need to go over it, but frankly, uh, I don't care because the door closes on it, but I built it this way. So number one, I have this over the outlet so that the kids can't unplug anything. So there's one plug and I have an APC uh, 1500 battery back up here. Um, I have a Netgear wireless uh, extender that goes to my Apex since I'm using the Apex Classic. <clears throat> Some wire management tray, which probably needs to be redone, but it is what it is. The EB-8. And then we got the uh, controller for the Neptune Core 20 return pump. We have the display for the Apex the brain for the apex, the fluid monitoring module, which has 
a leak detector underneath the stand and then uh, two optical sensors. I have the Tunes uh, ATO. This is uh, the, the, the bigger one, not the, the Nano or whatever. The uh, Gyre uh, controller, which if you don't know, uh, you can run two pumps off of one controller. So you can uh, buy the controller and a pump and then save a little bit of money and just buy the second uh, pump and plug it into it. Now, the one thing to uh, keep in mind is this is the power and it's a pretty flimsy connection. So if you take like a hair dryer to it and warm it up a little bit, you can uh, make a much better secure connection. Sorry about the shakiness there. I do have the breakout box that has two floats in it and the Lunar Sim module. Um, once again, the cable on it is real short and it's kind of against what Neptune has always done. Um, they've always given you plenty of length. So I wish that that cable was longer so that I could uh, uh, mount this in a different fashion. I just may have to come up with a, a different solution. So, and I am using, this is a Y splitter for the uh, T5s. So I'm using one outlet and uh, both the front and back fixtures come on at, uh, at the same time. I, I maybe uh, later down the road, I'll prefer to have the front or the back come on uh, independently, but for now, uh, I don't mind the uh, fixtures coming on at the same time. And then I also have a um, LED motion sensing light in here and I just turned the motion sensing feature off um, and I just turned the light on whenever I need in here. It's not often, so for the most part, it just stays dark like this. Um, the gyre is pretty dark. My display seems to be pretty lacking, but right now I'm running them alternate at 40% and they switch it like a second and a half. Um, the cool thing about the Neptune Core 20 is uh, you can run the 20 on standalone mode, which means that you can run this pump without even owning an Apex. Um, the other cool thing about the Core 20 pump is you can actually set it up to, uh, um, whenever you go uh, switch feed mode on, this, there, this takes some configuration and I haven't uh, completed all of that just yet, but you can actually set it up that whenever you go to uh, feed mode, the pump will go down to 1%. And basically what that means is it'll keep the, uh, the pipes full of water, the return pipe full of water. So you won't have any, um, back siphon there. So, uh, I guess I should touch base. This is 80, 20 light mount. And if you watched my last video on the aquatic, um, uh, aquatic life T5 fixture, uh, went over that pretty thoroughly and uh, this is a red sea reef for 250 so as far as the fish are concerned there's yellow tang blue tang multiple wrasses in here uh, coral beauty and a couple clowns and one uh, antheus in here somewhere but he doesn't typically come out very often so but so far everything's doing well um, some of the euphilias are a little lacking and uh, it looks like one of the shrimps has molted, I'm hoping, because there's a, <laughs> I guess a skeleton there, unless he is gone, but it looks like a molt right there. So, well, that about wraps it up. I'm sure this video has been long enough. There may have been something that I forgot, not intentionally. So questions, comments, concerns? Leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you all in the next one.